Let's bring in for more on the markets, BMO Global Asset Management CIO Ernesto Ramos and Jeffrey's Chief Market Strategist David Zervos. Guys, it's great to have you both with us this morning. Great to see you. Good to be here. Uh, David, let me begin with you, um, because all these different cross currents, inflation, uh, we mentioned the labor and chip shortages, Delta, uh, peaking growth, taper, vaccine efficacy, and of course the jobs number. Uh, is your view for the fall markedly either pessimistic or optimistic? I wouldn't say it's markedly either, Carl. I'd say it's kind of steady as she goes with me, at least. I, you know, I, I sort of stood back after Q1 and really thought that there was going to be a much slower job growth creation storyline, mainly coming from the fact that I thought businesses uh, would be able to get by with less workers. I mean, if you if you look at GDP, and we've talked about this before on the show, we're actually at record highs in GDP. So we're producing more than we produced in Q4 of 2019 uh, with 6 million odd less workers or 5 million odd less workers than we had uh, before the pandemic. So businesses have become more productive. They figured out how to do this. And I think the story that's missing from a lot of what you guys were talking about in the beginning of this was, as it relates to the job market is that, that yes, there's a bunch of high profile guys calling for, you know, we need more cheap labor, but they've actually been able to earn a lot and make a lot, record amounts, in fact, record earnings and record stuff mm. uh, with that. And I think that's an important, uh, that's an important uh, go forward thought because it suggests that maybe we don't need to hire back as many of those people. And this is going to be a slower process. And it's less about the demand side and more about the supply side. At least that's my narrative. Interesting. Well, that would uh, have ramifications, Ernesto, for certainly corporate profits, which is the one uh, that, and I guess uh, bond issuance, uh, is the, the saving grace of this environment right now. Uh, how much of that do you think acts as a salve for the markets? Well, I think economic, I mean, uh, earnings growth is the key to this market going higher, as well as a lot of support from the Fed. I mean, uh, the, the, the Fed has proven to be in the investor's best friend. And right now we're in a set of flux between uh, the labor market with uh, the pace of tapering, with interest rate hikes, with the infrastructure bill. A lot of uncertainties about what's going to happen, at what speed that's going to happen. Uh, but the one thing that's been constant is earnings growth. So that's going to keep propelling the market as long as it stays there. The question is, how much is in the price? And, and arguably, a lot of that is in the price already because the markets are trading at, at high valuations. But there is really no alternative to equities at this point. Even though equities are expensive, they're less expensive in relative terms than bonds are. You still have to be exposed to the to the market. And our, our take, BMO's take, is the fact that you want to be exposed to the market, but you don't want to overpay for stocks. So we're buying quality value stocks at this point, meaning companies that have solid business models, solid operating earnings, and, and are trading at the discount to their peers. That's what we're focused on.